Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to do a little video for you uh, to show you how I can do quickly a rapid prototyping uh, for a ring using a figure. Uh, so the figure uh, will be a polygon mesh and I'm going to import it right now. So I'm just going to do a file import and typically when you have polygon models, in this case I did something uh, as a first try on ZBrush. Um, uh, Typically, when you have polygons, it can be either 3DS format or OBJ. Uh, you can have also FBX, and I'm sure there are other formats, but the most common one, I would say it's OBJ, FBX, 3DS format. So I have here a model that I've done for uh, from a ZBrush, and I just saved it, as you can see, at the bottom right corner of my screen uh, as an OBJ format. So I'm just going to click Open. And it's going to come up with obj imports so in my case i just made sure that i checked map obj y to rhino z so i want the z axis to match uh, with my uh, obj y okay so i just checked this one and the rest i left it as is okay so i'm just going to click ok and it's going to import this very rough head that i played with on my zbrush so if i unselect it this is what it looks like so i'm going to bring i'm just going to move it aside a bit okay now, for your information, uh, I'm working with Rhino V6. Rhino V5, it's exactly the same principle, so it doesn't matter. Um, also, if you want to be able to see your meshes, you can select your object, because if I zoom in, you can see a bunch of quads, and sometimes it's triangles also, and this is what we call polygons. And if you go in the Properties tab under Object, uh, under Type, you can see that it says Closed Mesh, so there, it's watertight. There's no hole, there are no gaps in my mesh. If I want, I can always select my mo model here, and I've got a display panel here, okay? Uh, if I select this, on the, the display panel, and if you click on the sprocket, here it is, display, okay? So, under the display tab, I've got different options. Uh, I'm not sure if you can do this in uh, Rhino for Mac, okay? I'm not sure about that. But anyways, I just want to show you that you've got here an option called Mesh Wires, and you can see that it's unchecked. If I check it, now it becomes visible uh, permanently, okay? So I can clearly see my quads. So there's a difference between a polygon mesh and a NURBS surface. So my ring here is a NURBS surface. It's a typical CAD surface, and this one is a uh, polygon mesh. And I want to bring them together. I want to merge these two together to make a rapid uh, to make a ring that I can rapid prototype and to rapid prototype the format that you need is an STL file and an STL file is very similar to the polygon meshes it's going to create polygons as well so you have a polygon here and you need to make this as a polygon as well so I'm going to take this ring I'm going to select it in the main toolbar you've got an icon here called mesh from surface slash poly surface so I'm just going to left click on this icon and it's going to ask me what, how many polygon counts I want. I can have fewer polygons or more polygons. Obviously, if you're about to wrap, rapid prototype, you want the quality uh, to be as high as possible. Okay, so I'm going to bump it up all the way to the max here by pushing the arrow all the way to the right where it says more polygons. There's also an option for detail control. So if I click on this, and I can enter a, a numerical value. So if I want to make it very dense as a technique for you, I can set all these values to zero, like this, except this, the, the second one from the last row, I'm going to type 0 0.001, and it's going to make it a very, very dense mesh. So if I click on Preview, here's the result, okay? So by having more polygons, it's going to make it smoother. Uh, I find that this, if I lower the value, let's try to 10,000, click on preview, you can see that it's making it even denser. So by having as dense as possible, you're going to have a better resolution, okay? So I'm just going to set this like this, or again, you don't need to go with these values, okay? You don't have to do that. You can go back to simple, simple control and just bump it up to more polygons, so I'm going to push it all the way to the right, click on preview, and there you go. Okay, you can also do this. This is a more simplified way. And I'm going to click OK. 
So now I've got my polygon here and it's superimposed with my poly surface. So I've got my mesh and I've got my poly surface. I'm going to select my poly surface and I'm just going to hide it by clicking on the light bulb. So now I end up with only the polygon mesh. So if I go back to my properties tab, okay, and I select my ring, my polygon mesh, make sure that it says closed mesh, okay? This is important. It has to be a closed mesh for you to be able to rapid prototype. And I've got this mesh here. So what I'm going to do, I can always use that skull and put it on my, uh, on my ring and try to join them and all that stuff. What I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to trim off. So I'm just going to rotate my head like this using the gumball, rotate it by 90 degrees. Actually, it was the wrong way. So I'm just going to rotate it again by 180 like that. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to put myself in the right viewport. Maybe I'm going to move it a bit higher up so that we visually we can see the ring and the skull. I want to separate them. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line. So I'm going to go to my line toolbar on the main toolbar. And I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. So I press shift and lock it along the horizontal line like this. Left click and right click. Okay. So I've got this line and I'm going to move it okay it seems to be good uh, the way i've positioned it and i'm going to use the trim tool so to trim i always showed you uh, the it was this icon but it only works with nerves surfaces so if i expand the toolbar under the mesh i've got here the same functions i can split a polygon mesh and i can trim a polygon mesh so if i click on mesh trim it says here on the command line, select cutting object. So I'm going to select my line and then I'm going to press enter or right click. And then it says select object to trim. So I'm going to select the bottom part uh, below that line to trim it off. And you can see that it's going to do a neat job uh, about it. So now I'm going to press escape and I'm just going to delete that line. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to keep this mesh tools toolbar. So again, it's under this icon. I just expanded this toolbar. Okay. There you go. So now I'm going to go back in perspective mode. And if I put myself, so if I right click on perspective and I go and switch to shaded mode, okay, I'm already in this mode. You can see now uh, in shaded view what it looks like. Now I can see a big hole underneath it, okay? So if I select this skull, it says here under the properties, object type, open mesh. I want to make sure that it's a closed mesh. So I've got here a bunch of toolbars, uh, a bunch of tools that will allow me to fix my, my polygon mesh, okay? So typically when you do reverse engineering stuff also, uh, and I show this in my tutorials, how to fix holes. And I've got here a couple of icons that I use quite often, and one of them is called Fill Mesh Hole, okay? I'm just gonna left click on this icon, Fill Mesh Hole, and it says select mesh uh, edge on the hole boundary. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select one of these edges. And because it's a nice closed loop, it's going to automatic, automatically close it for me. Okay. By simply selecting the fill mesh hole here. So it's, if I select my skull and I go back in properties under object type, it says here, closed mesh, closed mesh, sorry. So that's exactly what I want. And if I zoom out here and I select my polygon ring, I, as, as a reminder, it was also a closed mesh. So I've got two closed meshes, so that looks great. So now I'm going to bring this call on the upper part of my ring. So I'm going to switch to the front viewport and just use the gumball and position it. Maybe give a rotation of 90 degrees like that. Now I don't need this mesh toolbar and I'm just going to visually position it like this. Use the handles, press shift to do a scale 3D. Try to match with the upper surface of my uh, ring. And now I need to bring the skull down and make sure that it intersects. So I, you have to make sure if I switch to the ghost mode or x-ray if you want, but ghost, I want to make sure that it intersects. Okay. And I can always adjust, maybe do a non-uniform scale to stretch it a bit and so on. Uh, and maybe make it a bit narrower. I leave that to you. And I'm just going to reposition it a bit like this. All right. So I've done that. 
And if I switch back to the shaded mode, this is the, what it looks like. And all I have to do, again, under the mesh from surface slash polysurface, I'm going to expand my toolbar. And again, I've got a bunch of tools that are similar to what you find in the CAD tools with the NURB surfaces, I mean. You've got the Boolean Union for uh, NURB surfaces. Well, under the Mesh Tools toolbar, you've got the same icons here. So if I expand it, you can do a Boolean Union with meshes, a difference, an intersection, and a split between meshes. So all I need to do is a Mesh Boolean Union. Click on it. So it says on the command line, select mesh. So I'm going to select this mesh and that mesh and right click. So now if I select, all of a sudden everything is merged together. So in the properties tab, it says close mesh. Again, it's important that it's closed. If you happen to find a bunch of little holes in your mesh, okay, that you're missing holes. Well, uh, don't hesitate to use the fill mesh hole to close off automatically and repair the missing meshes. And once you get your nice closed mesh, like I have right now, all I have to do is do a file, save as, and then I switch to, I go in the format and I'm going to make sure that I save as a format called STL, that STL. So let me try and find this. It's further down. There it is. STL for stereo lithography. So you save it in this format, you name it whatever you want ring to rapid prototype etc etc and there you go you're ready to have this rapid prototype so again i want to emphasize on the fact that you need to make sure that it's a closed mesh before you save it as an stl file okay and then you'll be able to rapid prototype your ring all right so i hope it clarifies some things for some of you and thank you for your attention take care